We have the new SRAM DB8 brakes. I'm going to cut that rear brake line, run it through the bike, and attempt to bleed it with a Shimano generic bleed kit. The SRAM DB8 brakes include a bleed block and all the little stuff to shorten the hose. I'm not entirely sure of all the tools I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna link them in the description once I complete the job. Stuff you're gonna need, we're gonna need a brake hose cutting tool. This mineral fluid, you're gonna have to order it. It's not super common. Definitely need some solvent. I'm a hack, so I use brake cleaner, but if you have alcohol, that works too. I'm also going to explore different bleeding options, anything it takes to not buy any more tools. I've been running the SRAM DB8 brake on the front because you don't have to cut or bleed anything, and it's been really good so far. I've got the rear SRAM coat on there, so that's why we gotta run a new brake line. That one has DOT fluid. Disconnect the existing brake hose. Usually it's an eight millimeter. Make sure you use a towel here because this is DOT fluid. Unbolt the existing brake lever. If it's a SRAM, it's a T25. This tool is specific to cut brake lines, but I'm gonna try to use the shifter cable cutter just in case you don't have this tool. The brake line looks pretty good, but it's not particularly straight. Now I'm gonna try to cut the existing brake line with the brake pacific tool and see if it looks better. There's definitely a better cut when you're using the pacific tool, so I'm gonna say it's worth buying this tool. Now we're gonna slide out all this extra stuff on the hose. Let's remove the existing caliper while leaving the brake line on to make less of a mess. If your bike has internal cable routing, you're gonna need an internal cable routing tool. This is the cheapest kit you can buy on Amazon. It'll be in the description if it works. There's three attachments in the kit. This one fits the best in the existing brake line. We are gonna take the threaded side and we're gonna thread it in there. Once that's threaded in all the way, we're gonna take the provided cable and we're gonna thread it in there. Now this is all attached, we're gonna pull it and everything's really tight. It makes the most sense to remove the brake line at this point. If you have a SRAM code, it's the standard T25. Careful not to lose any O-rings or washers. On this rear brake hose I just disconnected, I'm going to gently start pulling. We're gonna pay careful attention to this going into the bike to make sure it doesn't unhook. When you're pulling this, pull it very gently and slowly. The rear brake line on this specialized Enduro, it comes out right here, so I'm kind of manipulating the cable. It's a little bit stuck right now. There it goes. Now the internal cable routing tool is inside of the bike. The old brake line is out of the bike. We got the new SRAM DB8 brake line. What I'm gonna do is not strip it out like I just did. What I'm gonna do is disconnect the hose from it. Make sure you take the brake pads out of the new one. You don't wanna contaminate them. I'm gonna get the old brake line and match it up. I'm gonna add about two inches just to be safe. Cut the new brake line, carefully dispose of the old brake line, actually save it because you can reuse it. We are back on the rear of the bike. This thingy is back here because we just pulled it through. We're gonna take the new brake line here and thread it back in and do everything in reverse order. Instead of threading this in, I just pushed it in by hand. I'm on the front of the bike with the internal cable routing tool and I'm just going to gently pull it, carefully going back to the back of the bike, making sure any exits of the brake line are accounted for. And you actually don't have to be that careful with this. You just have to make it work. And the Amazon cheapy tool works fantastic. It's linked in the description, just in case you have internal cable routing. We are installing the rear brake caliper on the bike I've got the front bolt through the brake adapter and very special note on the SRAM DB8 brakes here. The bolt, the caliper is really chunky on the back. So you gotta wiggle it in from the side like this. See the angle? Boom. Because the SRAM brake caliper is so chunky, we gotta use a ball 
point Allen key so we can come in here at an angle. If you don't have a ball head Allen key, you could hack it in with a normal one. But since I have the tool, I'm just going to do it the right way. Make sure the bolts you're using have quite a bit of thread because we want a good bite on the brake caliper. Now we're going to remove the internal cable routing tool. As I learned, it's easier just to pull the thing out than to thread it. We're going to install the SRAM DB8 brake lever. We have the perfect length brake hose. Remember, I spared two inches off of this brake hose, so make sure you go long rather than short. Make sure you put this rubber piece on there before you put the last piece on. This little bolt and this tool, this is going to thread into the brake line. Once we have that barb threaded into the brake hose, we're going to put this piece on. It threads into the brake lever. Now we're going to get this little red thing that's in the box and the threads are going to be on this side, the outside, and we're going to put it over that. This is reverse thread, so thread to the left, like loosen, and that will tighten that up. Cinch it down by hand, don't go crazy. It should look like this when you're done. The silver and the red are level. That is going to be how it's supposed to go. Just tighten it up by hand. Now you're going to slide this guy up and it's ready to thread into the brake lever. You can also look at the little piece of brake line you cut off. As you can see, it looks exactly the same. We're going to try to bleed these SRAM mineral brakes because Park Tool made that so complicated. I'm going to try to simplify it. We are going to put that in the brake caliper. The bleed block sits in the bike and you don't have to bolt it in. It's completely stuck. On the inside of the brake caliper, we are using the included tool that comes in the package. This bolt was really tight when I first took it out. Just make sure you're putting a lot of pressure down when you're loosening it. There is an O-ring on the bolt. Do not lose this bolt. Okay, we are up here on the brake lever. Same deal, same tool. There's a little bolt here. We're gonna put a lot of pressure down. When you open these bolts, it takes quite a bit of force on the initial crack. These are the bleed screws on the SRAM DB8 brakes. They're a very, very small thread, much smaller than the Shimano thread. I'm gonna to attempt to bleed these DB8 brakes with a hodgepodge Shimano brake bleeding kit because I don't wanna buy all the stuff. This is a universal Shimano brake bleed kit you can buy on Amazon for like $19. And let's see if it works. I put a little piece of hose on the funnel and I'm just gonna push the fluid up just like a Shimano brake and see if it works. This is what I did. I found the right thread, threaded it into the brake lever, cut a little piece of hose and have the Shimano brake funnel. I was tempted to put Shimano brake fluid in, but I did get the correct Maxima fluid. I had to order it. It's not super common. Okay, understanding that bleeding brakes is like wiping your ass. As long as you get all the shit, all the air out of the system, it really doesn't matter how you do it. Pushing all the bubbles out of the brake fluid syringe, just like a Shimano brake system or any other one, this is a SRAM dot fluid trick. What you do is you flick the syringe and try to trigger any bubbles to come out. Once we're pushing out no air, no shit, we're good to go. Now we're gonna do this just like Shimano brakes. We're gonna hook this and we're gonna go upside down and we're gonna push. So the first round didn't work. There wasn't enough fluid. It didn't make its way up. So we're repeating the process with a lot more fluid. The SRAM Maxima fluid is pretty prone to getting air bubbles in it. I found by hanging the syringe upside down or right side up like this for 10 minutes, it really let all the air come out of the fluid. If you shake the syringe, it definitely aerates. It's kind of like using dot fluid. It's a little more tricky than Shimano fluid. Now we got three times the fluid. We're gonna push it through the system. Okay, we did it with the Shimano brake bleed kit. We got a nice firm lever up here. What you're gonna do is get the syringe, fill that thing all the way up. 
aggressively push it through the brake system and then come up here and do the Shimano clicky lever thing. Quickly put that back in and it worked. Taking a look at the orifices of the bleed ports on the DB8 brakes, here's where the problem's coming from. It's a very small orifice. If you buy the SRAM kit, what they want you to do is to bleed this with vacuum by pulling the syringe up. But what I did is I brute forced the fluid through it and made it work. I'm gonna go for a big ride. I'll let you know if air comes into the system. We got the bleeding done. I changed the gloves. This is what you gotta know. The SRAM DB8s come with a organic brake pad, which means they suck. So I'm gonna transfer in my SRAM Kodar metal brake pads. They're the same ones. The metal ones will say metallic and you can tell from this color. What I'm gonna do is decontaminate the metal brake pad for the new rotor, or I guess it's the same rotor, but while it's out, we're just gonna clean it up. You sand the brake pad on a level surface with some aggressive sandpaper. We're going to hook up the spring clip back into the brake pad. The clips will go around the friction surface. What I'm actually gonna do is go ride metal pads on the rear and the organic ones on the front and see if there's a difference. With the brake caliper loose, we're going to pop in the new brake pads. Pinch them together because of that spring. Now we're gonna put the bolt in there. Now I'm at the rear brake and I'm resetting the pistons and we are maintaining a good lever. So remember, the brake caliper is loose. We have to center it on the rotor. The easiest way you can do it is spin the wheel, hold the rear brake, come back here, and while you're holding the rear brake, you're going to tighten the brake caliper down. And remember, I'm holding the rear brake. Everything should be nice and centered now. No rubs, this rear brake is good to ride. SRAM DB8 caliper is installed on a 200 millimeter centerline rotor. We hacked that bleeding. Wasn't that hard if you follow my instructions. I'm gonna leave the organic pads in the front and see if there's much of a difference. I already know that organic pads suck, so I know the rear is gonna feel way better, but let's go ride it. Don't forget to install the safety pin on the back side of the brake caliper once this is all complete. I've only been on one ride, so I can't definitively say that bleeding procedure works. But the SRAM DB8 brakes with metallic metal brake pads was all I've ever asked for in a brake. Cheap, reliable, and powerful. If you use my Botch Shimano bleeding method, the bleeding procedure is exactly the same, but you gotta send the fluid faster through the brake lines because the orifices in the bleed ports are smaller. Hope you enjoyed the video. Watch the next one here.